Welcome again to Good Gas Mondays. It's something we do every single Monday um, in the night because that's usually where the day kind of calms down for me and so many other people, especially if you're um, under some kind of restriction of movement, you're probably required by law to be home <laughs> at a certain time in the evening. So the day kind of slows down for most people on Monday evenings. But welcome to Good Gas Mondays. And I'm really excited to share with you uh, reflection around what it will take for us to change the fruits that are bearing in our lives. Now, leading up to this live, I shared on my Instagram page, and, and some of you may have seen it, some of you may not have seen it, but I shared on my Instagram page what I consider to be principle one of the harvest. So for the next four weeks, I'm going to be using Good Gas Mondays as a space to discuss harvest principles. My, my company is called The Success Farm very deliberately. I believe that we ultimately can determine the kind of fruits that come to life on our farm or life farm or life garden if we plant purposefully, if we plant in a, in a spirit of abundance, if we plant knowing exactly what we want as the outcome and we don't plan to just buck up in a, some kind of fruit at the end of the road. But we, we know that we want to see oranges bear fruit. And so we're planting the seeds that will grow to become big, beautiful, bountiful orange trees. But before we can even get to the point of enjoying a harvest, there are so many principles that we have to observe in order to honor that process and get or reap something um, worthwhile. And so that's why I'm going to be using February to talk about harvest principles, four harvest principles that we're going to do one each Monday. And this Monday, the focus is principle number one, which is you reap what you sow. There are two scriptures in the Bible that come to mind when I, I think about that principle. But even if you don't subscribe to biblical principles, if, if that is not your groundation, you know, the foundation of your principles, nature is a law unto herself. And you can't dishonor nature. You can't mock nature. Climate change, global warming is one of those very vivid examples of the fact that if you frustrate the natural laws eventually nature will do her own self-correcting and whatever the cause of the dis-ease and the dysfunction is in nature nature is gonna wipe it out so you hear people talking about the sea reclaiming land that land was meant to be underwater and whatever human beings did started to build on the land and use it and nature decides that she wants back the land and the, the sea levels will, will, will rise to come and eventually take that back. Shoreland will get um, further inland. And there is no more land for us to, to farm, to, to build on, to structure the highways and the buildings and the homes and all of that. Similarly, when the earth is getting too hot, in order to cool itself back down, you'll see the, the, the ice caps are melting as a consequence of the heat, of course. But certainly that also adds a layer of cooling um to, to to the environment but again sea levels rise take back land and who disappear not the humans the humans them have to run off right the humans have to run off because we're the ones who are creating a space of this ease in nature a lot of people argue as well that even the the covid19 um pandemic is a consequence of how we have chosen to live our lives and so nature is balancing the scales again so i i wouldn't call it a conspiracy theory it's a perspective that some people have that you know oh you want to you want to eat up all the animals you want to chemically induce these processes of growth um and harvest you want to cheat the process well bam here's a disease that's going to force you all to stop what you're doing so from seeing how the birds are suddenly getting louder Right? People are saying they're now hearing birds singing in spaces where all they could hear before were car and truck horns and the sounds of, of engines revving and factories operating and people playing, talking, screaming, shouting. But now the sound of the birds can now cut through. The mating calls are clearer. Nature is able to communicate clearly with itself and honor its own process. 
So even if you don't subscribe to biblical principles, if you look to nature, one of the laws that we can see clearly is that you reap what you sow. Some of us may have been introduced to that principle when it's punishment time. <clears throat> so when you're getting, you, you, you've earned consequences on certain bad behavior and somebody says, yeah, so it go, you reap what you sow. So it's often seen in a negative light, but I want to lean into the positive perspective of this, which says really, whatever you put in is what you're going to get out. And you can't mock the process. Galatians says you can't mock God. Nature says you can't mock me. This is how it works. This is the order of things. This is how success, um, this is how growth, this is how reward, returns on investment are generated. You reap what you sow. So if you sow grass, you're going to reap grass. If you sow oranges, you're going to reap oranges. If you sow apple, you're going to reap apple. Sow sugar cane, going to reap sugar cane. Sow sow a sop, going to reap sow a sop. It's the principle of the harvest. And I think the most important principle, if you don't stay with me for the entire four weeks to go through the four, once you come to an appreciation and an understanding of this first principle, it changes how you show up in life. And here's how you're going to change. One, you realize that your actions have consequences, good consequences and bad consequences. But ultimately you realize that what you do earns you some amount of reward, consequence, or karma. And if you realize that, then you can change the karma. If you're looking at the rewards that you have earned so far, let's, let's think about um, your, your bank account. Your bank account is the perfect evidence of reap what you sow. What do you have reaping now in terms of savings? What do you have reaping now in terms of debt? What did you sow to reap those things. It's your actions and your behavior. What you have done, what you have sown, is now showing up to serve you. And sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. So the first thing is that you will recognize that the actions you're taking have consequences. Sometimes the consequence is not clear. Sometimes the consequence is not immediate. But best believe the consequence is coming. The consequence is coming. And it is a lessening patience. And as a second thing, this principle helps you to recognize. There's a lessening patience, understanding that not everything you sow, you reap immediately. Because time must be allowed to take her course. So you'll have to exercise patience before you see the positive consequence of the behavior. You'll have to exercise patience sometimes to see the negative consequence of the behavior. But believe the consequence a come because you can't mock nature, you can't mock the natural order of life, and you can't cheat the process or dishonor the process. Cheating or dishonoring it only puts you at a disadvantage, but the consequence is coming. You know how rivers are sometimes trained to take a different course, and then at some point in, in its natural um, life, something happens and it goes back to its original course. Sometimes you try to you know, train <laughs> the consequence and the, the, the outcome, but it will always take its natural course. Eventually, it finds its natural course and it takes it. Sometimes that is, that is when the storm and the floods come and it goes right through people's houses and tears them off land. And then you'll hear a, a, an environmentalist come to say, well, listen, a river was running through here 300 years ago, 50 years ago, 10 years ago. And we did something as human beings to stop the water from coming down here. Um, but here it is. It has found its way back into its natural course. Um, many of you may have an example of that, perhaps in your community, watching the news when the, the heavy rains come and seeing how nature just takes her course. You can delay it, but it's impossible to deny the natural order and consequence of things. So there's a lessening patience. Not because it is delayed means it's not coming. The consequence is coming. So if we know that what we do have, what we do will have a consequence. There's something that we'll have to pay. There's something that we're going to reap. And if we understand that and accept that not everything we plant immediately, we're going to see the benefit and the bloom of it immediately. 
there will be a, a level of patience required. Time will have to pass to allow those things to take root and bear their fruit. But there's another component of the principle that I don't want you to miss. And it is the fact that you ultimately are responsible for the life outcomes. The life you have right now is the life that you have earned. So you have to look at your life from a place of personal responsibility if you want anything at all to change. So you see the parent that you're blaming for not being the perfect parent and not giving you all the opportunities that would have helped to set you on the right footing and the right path, not setting the right example for you to blossom and to, to shine like you see some of your peers are shining. The life that you have right now, if you are over 18 and living in a country where you have rights over your body and the opportunity to choose your, your life path, whether you go to school or not, whether you take out a bank loan or not, whether you enter this relationship or not, whether you live in this community or not, whether you attend this, um, this job, this space of service, this school or not, as long as you are in a country where you get to choose, nobody's choosing those things for you, right? By law, you have the authority to choose. You don't get to blame your mother or your father for the reason that your life is what it is. Do they bear some amount of responsibility for creating the environment, creating the circumstances? Absolutely. People have impact on us based on their proximity to us. What they do will impact us. So I'm not saying that it will not have an impact. But the minute you get into a position where you can now make a choice for yourself, the job is yours to start choosing differently. So continuing to choose the dysfunction that you grew up with, probably got comfortable with, continuing to choose that is your fault. Yes, somebody introduced you to the dysfunction, made the dysfunction seem normal and healthy. But once you recognize that it's dysfunction and you keep choosing it, that's your responsibility. So you don't get to blame your childhood circumstances for the decisions that you're consciously making right now. It's your life and it's your responsibility. And the first principle of the harvest is what? You reap what you sow. Notice that it doesn't say you reap what others sow for you, right? And as we explore the other principles, you'll understand why. Even if people are working in your garden, tending to the soil, assisting you to produce a harvest, you reap what you sow. So it's the work that you put in that's going to get an outcome out for you. The fact that others are helping you to tend to that particular fruit is still your fruit. You are engaging them. You are allowing them to water the, water the seed. Whenever you don't want them to water, this, water the seed, it is your garden, it's your farm. You can't tell them, stop, ease up, come up, um, you know, give me some space. You have the authority to do that. So we have to look at our lives from that space of ultimate responsibility. My life is my job. My life is my responsibility. When I think about the role I play in my life, I am the chief executive officer. Think about a big company. When there are big decisions to be made, when there are staff cuts, when there are hiring um, phases, when there are promotion um, opportunities in a company, when they're looking to upskill their staff, when they're looking to change the direction of the business, when they're setting the goals for how, how much they want to earn this quarter, what the reward is going to be for the employees or the staff members who do. The CEO has to wear the hat of ultimate responsibility. You don't get to walk into the meeting with the board of directors and blame a line manager and blame a supervisor. You are the CEO and you have that title for a reason. You are the chief executive of your life. Chief executive of your life. So if you look at your life that way, it makes it easier to take the decisions that are otherwise hard to take or feel impossible to take, like the people you want in your life. Yeah? As CEO of your life, and, and here's the rough part, right? This, this, this fact is hard for all of us to deal with, even me. 
you're not just CEO, you're the chief financial officer, you're the human resource manager, you are the head of the ancillary department because every mess in your life, you have to clean it up. Like you can't delegate the job of cleaning up your life. You can't delegate the job of choosing and curating the people who you want in your circle. And you have to do that. And if you hang back so and just make anybody come in and pass through and do what they want to do, who for business it mash up? Your business. Who for life it mash up? Your life. So you're not just CEO who gets to delegate something to the director of human resources and then you delegate something to the director of finance and you, direct, you delegate something else to the director of people development and investment and you, you delegate that to... Mm -mm. You have to manage all of those responsibilities. So see yourself as the CEO, as the director of HR, as the director of finance, as the director of people development, and, and enhancement, all of those big fancy titles that rest in, in large corporations, you are the one person in your life who has all of that authority. And guess what? In every single one of those departments, you reap what you sow. So we have to get really conscious. We have to get really deliberate. We have to get really purposeful about what we are planting in those areas of our lives. Because the first principle of the harvest is that what we plant, that is what we're going to reap. What we plant, that is what we're going to reap. Now in 2021, because my word of the year is purpose, two words actually, purpose and focus, right? But on the matter of purpose, I am accepting that I am the CEO of my life, one. My actions have consequence, two. And there's some amount of diligence, consistency, and patience required as I'm choosing what to plant in order to see the harvest. Three. Now, with that sense of responsibility now, I have to be purposeful. So I can't waste the precious minutes and the time. I can't waste the opportunities and the windows for action. I can't waste the thought, the words, the investment of talent and skill. Because every single thing I do is earning me a consequence. And so I have to be purposeful about the consequence I want and therefore the action that I'm going to take. Life principle or harvest principle, sorry. Number one, you reap what you sow. So what can we do to be more purposeful about what we reap at the end of our harvest? <laughs> The first thing I would say is we have to understand the season that we are in. If you, if you look at the farmer's calendar, you'll see sometimes the, the year is broken out into four seasons and that tells you what weather you can, ex you can expect, um, what temperatures and how certain soils will respond, how certain plants, certain se seeds will respond in certain climates. You have to know what season you're in. And understanding the season that you're in, you will know what seed to plant. And you will know the quality and the readiness of the soil at that time. Now, I'm promising we're going to go deeper into these principles, right? So I, I can't explain every single component of it on this one line. That's why I want you to stay with me for the next four weeks. I'm going to start the conversation in this live around the seasons because that's, 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 an, that's another of the principles, right? But you see, once you understand the season that you're in, you will know what seed you're going to plant and you will know if the soil that you're planting it in is ready to receive that seed. When you know the season that you're in, you will know what seed to plant and you will be clear on whether or not the soil is ready to receive that seed. So here what that mean now. Some seed can't plant right now. Can you understand the season where you're in? Some seed cannot plant right now. And that's a mistake that most persons will make at the start of the year 
everything I do one time. Yeah, man, me I start on everything, everything, everything I do right. No, 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 no. Every part of my life I start improving now. Every seed can plant one time. Because based on the life season that you're in, you will drop the seed. And I just not the right climate for the seed kind of bearing the fruit. So it just dropping at the soil, so still on the ground. It can't even catch up a root. Cause the temperature not right for that particular seed. There. It don't mean that no seed is to be planted. It means you have to be careful and deliberate and clear on what seed is to be planted in the season. What kind of soil do I have working with right now? What kind of climate and environment am I in right now? What about the environment? Can I change? No. What about it? I cannot change right now, but that's not going to stop me from planting some kind of seed. A seed will be planted in this season. Not every seed, not all of my ambitions I can begin to invest in right now, no, no. But there is a seed I can plant in this season if I'm purposeful and clear on the season I'm in. So the first question you ask yourself then is, what season am I in? Am I in a season of harvest? Because some of us right now, we're in the season where things are just blooming. The investments that you would have made last year, the sacrifices that you would have made last year, you're seeing the benefit of that right now. So fruit a drop off a tree, right? Fruit a drop off a tree. But even when you receive a harvest, you know, you still have to be thinking about, okay, while I'm getting this, what am I doing now? Because whatever I do now is also going to bear me some other fruit in the future. So what am I doing as the fruits are falling off the tree, ripe and ready to be consumed? What am I doing? You're in a season of harvest. You're in a season of bloom. And as you're enjoying the harvest, you have to be careful what you do with the abundance where you have. So how are you sharing that and allowing it to bless and serve others? Yeah, because so you give, it's, it's so you will receive. As you give, so you make room to receive more. So how are you sharing the harvest with others? How are you responsibly employing that harvest so it can create new and better harvests for you in the future? How are you taking care of that thing now that is bearing fruit so it can continue to bear a little bit more, a little bit longer? How are you paying attention to that tree to see what you can learn in this moment of harvest to extend the harvest? To multiply the harvest again when harvest season comes. Like, now you pick 10 apples, what you can learn from the tree right now. So you can get 20 apples when it's time to harvest again. What, what limbs and branches did not make it into this harvest? And are you going to try and juke them back on the tree or just understand that those limbs and branches just not meant to this season and this space that you're in? And the tree had to grow without them. The leaf them will drop off. What are you trying to do? Trying to pave back the leaf them onto the tree or accepting that as part of the harvest, those leaves have to be shed. You have to be careful what you do in your harvest. Sometimes things are released from your life. You're divorced from certain situations and experiences. And as soon as you feel blessed, as soon as you feel successful, as soon as you feel a joy and the abundance coming on, you start reach back for the things them where we're divorced from you. We're separated from you in order to get to the harvest. And you mash up your own harvest. Mash up the harvest. Mash up your harvest. Because in this, in this euphoria, in this excitement of, you know, seeing the good thing coming, you start reach back for everything that you felt like you lost to bring it into this harvest season with you. And you mash up your harvest. Because part of that natural order is to remove and separate you from the things that are not supposed to be with you in that season. So you have to be careful what you do, even in the time of harvest. You have to see the season that you're in and be careful what seed you're planting, even in your harvest season. What actions you're taking that will earn you a particular reward, even in your harvest season. Now, sometimes you're in a fallow season, right? Grown dry, grown tired. You work the ground, you work the ground, you work the ground. You get all you're ever gonna get out of that plot of land, and it cannot, it can't give you no more harvest. Like that piece of land there, done, it done, it finished. All of the fruit that go bear, it bear it already, it done. You have to just leave it like a bit, make it replenish and renew itself, and go find somewhere else, some other space to plant in. You know, I mean, so you have to give up on the plot of land forever, ever, ever, you know, but you have to rest it. 
you have to get a little time, you have to get a little space. Whatever it is that you are forcing to bear fruit right now, just you know, take it on our fight. The season where you're in now with, with this plot of land is the fallow season. Take it on our fight. Make it renew, regenerate, come back to itself to see if there is something you can do to um to, to reinvest some seeds and plant again. So it could be your business. You know, maybe you're trying hard with the business, you're trying hard with the business. You try, you try, you try with the business, the business now nah, turn over, now nah, turn over, now nah, turn over. You've done all that you could do within law and within reason. To pull what you could out of the soil at this time. And you realize no matter all you put in, it just now come out. The business just now give away. Yeah, it now show you the kind of return on investment that you want. Take the annual fight, follow season that the land needs for just replenish itself. What other thing can you invest in while that space settles and gets its own period of regeneration? Because sometimes spaces need rest. So that's why I say understand the season that you're in. Maybe you're in a season now where the, the, the plot of land just want to plow up. You know, just want to turn it over now and release the energy night and start plant. So if you're in a season, a, a part of the season now when you need to plow and prepare the land, put on your gloves, get your shovel and start to plow the land and prepare it for the soil. Too many of us do not want to do the preparation work. We want to come and see the land already. Right? The land must demarcate and the boundaries set and the fencing go up. Right? Somebody must lay out the irrigation plant feet already. Somebody must dig it up. Somebody must draw the line them and show you the little rows them where you for planting. Huh? Somebody must uh, dig out the hole and say, all right, you're putting the seed in there. So we don't want to do the work. The preparation work. And if you don't do the preparatory work, how the seed I go plant? How the seed I go plant? You expect somebody to come in your life and do the preparatory work for you? Let me give you an example of what that preparatory work could be. Emotional well-being. Some of us have wounds that we have not healed from that damaged us so deeply and so painfully. We not deal with the wound. But we want to bring some other people coming at the space now. In that space of brokenness, that place where we are not yet prepared to have any company. We are open the door and I say, come, 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 come. Yeah, man, we want new friends. And you know, see, you cut up over the last friendship, the last deep and, 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 and substantial friendship where you have. So you're really not in a place to trust anybody anymore. But you have not done the preparatory work to get to a place of healing so that you can open up to new friendships, new people who you can trust. Yes, you refuse to do the preparatory work. You refuse to do the preparatory work to get the soil ready. But here you are trying to plant new seeds, new friendships, new people into that space. And you wonder why it can't bear the fruit. Can you say, but, but look how me look, you know, me look new friends. I'm going to open my mind to new people. I'm going to say, all right, come. And the people them come and them, them must do the same thing what everybody else do every time. All right, well, if everybody do it every time, maybe the problem is not everybody every time. Maybe the problem is that you have not prepared the land to be able to plant good seed there. Know the season that you're in and what is required of you in that season. So if a planting season, prepare the land before you plant. So you have to know the season you're in so you will know what seed to plant. And so you can assess the soil to see if really and truly the soil is ready for this particular investment. And if it is not, be honest with yourself. Because if you force it, you're not going to get that bloom, that bountiful harvest that you want. And you can't cheat nature. You can't go around the laws of nature. If the land never prepared for the seed, you could have juke it down in that dirt come more as far as you want. But if the land was not prepared for it, it can't take root. If that seed then not make for flourishing and that soil there, no waste your time. No waste your time. Because you can't force nature to do what is unnatural. And if you think you force her to do it, just watch and see how she's going course correct. And your, your space is going to be now, look how I'm going to waste my time. Look how nothing I'm investing and never work yet. You're trying to violate principles of the harvest and expecting bountiful harvests. And that's not how harvest principles work. 
So if you're trying to discern what seed to plant right now, I would ask you to ask yourself, what season are you in right now? What go on in your life? What work and what not work? What lessons you learn where you not implement and put to good use to shift the direction, the quality, and the season that you're in? Are you being patient with yourself? Are you being compassionate with yourself? Are you being forgiving? Are you being honest? Or are you being impatient with yourself? Are you powering up negative self-talk and discouraging yourself and building up fear, building up anxiety, building up self-doubt, surrounding yourself with people who are likewise not compassionate to you? Harmful to your energy, harmful to your aura and your space, offering no support to help you on this journey to prepare your soil and to plant the right seeds? Are you doing things for the wrong reasons and then wondering why you can't get the right results? Are you forcing nature's hand to make something fruitful that really was not meant to be? What season are you in right now? So get clear on that. If you're struggling to figure out what am I supposed to do right now? What seed am I supposed to plant? What am I to invest my time in? What am I to invest my money in? What should I cut ties with? What should I continue to invest and to, to nourish and to, to allow to grow? You're not clear on that? Ask yourself, what season are you in right now? What is life telling you about your life? Just sit down in the morning, give yourself 10, 15, 20 minutes, however many minutes you can find to go inward in your life. And just ask, what well, this now work? Why does that frustrate me so much? Why the problem is now move? Why not go away? Just sit down and, and, and allow your life to tell you what it's trying to tell you. And part of my morning routine includes that spiritual reflection and meditation every morning. Persons ask me how? That's how. It's not a magic trick. I don't just wake up and then I'm peaceful. Sometimes I wake up with a sense of anxiety. But I am sure that throughout my day, I have an opportunity there to create some peace and some balance. So in my morning routine, I get to sit down and reflect look at myself and my principles and the life that I'm trying to build and see what steps I have to take today in this precious 24 hours, the 1440 minutes I have today. What can I do today to honor and to serve that purpose? And at night, I have a nighttime routine and I do the reflection again to see if what I set out to accomplish was accomplished. And if I got in my own way, how did I do that? And how do I stop doing that when sunrise again tomorrow? So peace and clarity and a sense of progress in your life. Because sometimes you work hard and you don't feel like you're making the progress. You can't know if you're making the progress if you're not pausing to reflect each day. Am I in a better position to be successful at this goal based on the things I did today? If the answer is yes, awesome. Now what do I do tomorrow to keep that momentum? If the answer is no, well, what am I going to do tomorrow to change the momentum? But if you're not asking yourself the right questions, you can't come up with the right answers in order to take the right action. Come again. If you're not asking yourself the right questions, you can't come up with the right answers to take the right action. You ask everybody else the question, you know. You ask your friend the question. You ask your partner the question. You ask your associate, your colleague, your co-worker. You ask the pastor. Everybody around there, you ask the question. Because you feel like somebody out there must have the answer for you. Ask yourself, you have the answer. You're the person who is sitting in your life every day. You know exactly why things aren't working in a particular area of your life. But you haven't spent any time to sit down and interrogate yourself. You will interrogate the person who is in a relationship with you. Because remember, say, when you go to take notes from who are being dishonest and who, you know, and you draw for the family and say, well, guess what now? On the 17th of March in 2016, I said to me this, and now we reach the 1st of February 2021, and you tell me something else. I'm of the, of the member said that, and this is we did that. So come now and tell me what happened, because it now makes sense. When I time to interrogate other people, oh, you say it there, and waste the time, and you say take an X amount of time about me, no, say, and I take some time. So explain how things got here, because I know what I know, and the data ain't matching up. We can interrogate others so well. When it comes to remembering the facts of when other people are at fault, good pandat. Good pandat. 
but how much time are you spending with yourself doing that kind of interrogation like girl oh you get up and said this was going to and that is the goal and this is the vision and this is the journey and this is the path and then you still yourself with this habit with this behavior in this space you're not serious you're not take yourself serious or me to take you serious now when you get up again and say that's what you're going to do but now i have no vibes because every time you tell me say you're going to do the thing you don't do the thing you get me psyched up on vibes up and you're going to tell everybody around and say yeah this is what i do i i need to do it not a vibes you broke your own vibes because you are not even trying to be accountable to yourself tell yourself something break the promise to yourself and then i wonder how yourself feel so yourself the most feel bad yourself the most feel bad self have feelings you know and it's that feeling of fatigue overwhelm discouragement disappointment sadness a lack of hope those feelings sometimes we are contributing to those feelings because we refuse to keep the promises we make even to ourselves. We not do the interrogation none at all, the self-reflection, the penetrative meditation to remind ourselves who we said we were and then look back at our actions to see if those actions are matching the behavior. We're not even doing that. And then we say, boy, I don't know what step to take next. Don't know what seed to plant. Don't know what life is asking of me. Can, can you look at my life and tell me what to do? How other people must find time to look at your life when you don't even find the time? Just means that. How do you expect others to find the time to look at your life, give you guidance on your life when you won't even make the time to do that? So in order to understand the season you're in, in order to be clear on what seed to plant right now, set aside some time in your day to reflect on you your behavior, your habits, your routines, your commitments, the promises you're making to yourself and breaking that are breaking your own heart and ruining the sense of self-trust and self-love that we all need to fight for the lives that we want. So how you disappoint and hurt yourself and let yourself down before you start asking how other people are letting you down. Do the interrogation of yourself first. Who am I? The things I say I am, the things I say I value, the principles I say I have. Why am I not them in my life? And what do I need to do differently in this 24-hour window? In this 24-hour period? Today, because I have today. What do I need to do today to honor those principles? And if you make that a part of your daily routine, you can imagine getting up 365 days a year with that mindset right because you understand the principle what i reap is what i sow sorry what i sow is what i reap you understand that that harvest principle what i sow is what i will reap if you understand that principle and put yourself in a space of ultimate responsibility as the chief executive officer responsible for the outcomes responsible for the harvest responsible for what is going to bear fruit in your life I get that and I get that it will take patience and I get that it will take time because the life I have did not just pop up on me. Nobody threw a rope around my neck and dragged me into this life today. It's a life I earned, it's a life I worked for, it's the karma that I have earned throughout the decisions and choices that I've been making. You see, once you get that and you wake up every morning with that sense of responsibility, personal responsibility for the life you want, and you start to ask yourself the right questions now so you can get the right answers so you can take the right action you end up with so much peace that it passes understanding there's a scripture in philippians i believe that says that um people around you won't get you know who this new you is like who are you what's going on over there you know, who is this person that's so focused on what they have to do in their lives and not blaming anybody anymore? You who love telling people say that person they fault? You who never take responsibility for nothing yet? Like you are here standing in front of me and saying, well, this is my failing and I'm going to do what I need to do to correct it. Like you're actually not trying to pass the blame so and move it around. What? Who is this? It's the person who understood life principle, harvest principle number one that I'm going to reap whatever I sow. So it don't make sense. I spend time looking for people to blame. 
because it's my responsibility to decide what I'm going to sow and therefore what I'm going to reap in my life. And I get up every morning and I ask myself the question, am I making the decisions, taking the steps, taking the actions to deliver the kind of harvest that I say I want? And if the answer is yes for me, I keep doing it. And if the answer is no for me, I stop doing it. It is my job and my responsibility. Harvest principle number one. I reap what I sow. I reap what I sow. So when things start going good in your life, right? And people say, boy, you're lucky. People say, things are going good for you. And your fortunes change, man. I will pray for you. People are praying for you. You are praying for yourself. You have a big, awesome creator that has set some laws in place and laid out a foundation for you. So you understand the law and the principle, you know. Creator, don't set that already, you know. And show the principle. And if we honor the principles, we get the reward. So yeah, I'm praying for myself to honor the principles, to show up with the right mindset, to do the right things then. People are praying for me, yeah. But that alone can get me for reap these things. Me have to work. And it is what I have sown that you're seeing me reap. So thank you for recognizing that I'm in a season of harvest. I may have reap some of the good things them now. Like I'm up them get bigger. You know, when I tell them when I up them a beer, them lick a bit, them can barely feed me, but can't cut it now and share nobody. Can't share to nobody. Cause the apple them not big, you know. Apple them barely can sustain me, much less for me to be able to share it. But you see my harvest change you now, the apple them big. Big like melon, right? And you're saying, wow, you know, what luck you have when you pick a good piece of land for plant fun. What are your secrets? I don't know big secret. They are principles of the harvest and I've chosen to honor the principles. And the first one is plant good. Because if you're not plant good, you can't reap good. So what you're seeing with this big, beautiful space of reaping is become a plant good. But know the season I was in. I looked at the soil and realized what was good to plant in it in that season. I did the work to prepare the soil and select my seed. And I pushed my seed up. Oh, well, that sounds a little um, sexual. So I have to be careful of the analogy so it doesn't you know, get out of control. But I, I put the seed in the soil. I put the seed in the soil. And it is the very same seed that I would have prayed over. That the people who love me would have prayed over. It's the very same soil. I chose to plant in based on the season I was in, based on what my life was telling me about me, based on the revelation and the, the third eye opening and the deep meditation and clarity that I got. That is how I even knew what season I was in. That is how I even understood the soil that I'm planting in. That is how I even know, know what seed to select to put in the soil. So what you're seeing now where my apples are as big as watermelons is not a secret sauce, it's a harvest principle. And I honored my harvest principles. And nature, God, the creator, can be mocked and can't be, can be cheated. If I saw it go, I saw it go. And if I follow the law, the law will reward me. If I follow and honor the law, it will reward me. So if you're struggling now with that, like where you are right now, you don't know what the next step is supposed to be. You don't even trust yourself to make a good decision right now because the decisions that you've been making not turning out to, to do much. You seem to be making mistake after mistake. Buck your toe and drop. Buck your toe and drop. And you're just tired. Tired of failing at things. Tired of things not going how you thought they would go. And you don't want to try anymore. Like you want to just say, you know, forget it. What, wherever the wind carry me, make it carry me. Chop. Just hope some get there we made above water. How about that? Asking me about vision, about vision, about me. I have no vision. I just want to survive. I just want to live. I just don't want dead. That is the goal. I don't want dead. I don't want dead. That is the only goal I have. I want to be alive. Don't ask me about the quality of life that I want to be. Come with camera that thing about that. If that's where you are right now, that too is an indication of the season you're in. But you have to spend some time with yourself, preferably in the morning, before your day gets hectic. You know, see if you can go outside and take a walk and do that reflection and the meditation. Sit at a point in your house where you can face the sun, feel some light on your skin. You know, where you can have a sense of quiet and peace even. So maybe you can't see the sun, but you can hear yourself think. But sometimes we just need to pause and hear ourselves think. Think through the feeling of frustration and dig deeper. What do I feel? 
okay why do i feel that okay why do i feel that okay and why is that and why is that and just why yourself down to the root of the issues that you're having so the root is not that you are unworthy and a lot of us get to that point when we do the reflections we don't spend a lot of time whying our way down into the roots so we say why if i feel sad why i feel sad but come just always i make mistake and it's like me don't know what good for myself and why do you think that is true come here eat it i'm in a sense self-deprecation not gonna help you for the season where you're in negative self-talk not gonna help you if you assess the soil Breaking your own heart and having low confidence in your ability to choose. Now the help you to pick a good seed to put in the soil. So stop talking to yourself like that. And when you get to that point, why yourself a little deeper? Well, why do you think that you're not in a sense and you're unworthy? Well, you know, I've been having these conversations with X or Y person and that's what is being affirmed to me. Well, why you keep having those conversations? Come and I go. Why are you I go? Because I don't have enough things to do with my time. Why you don't have enough things to do with your time? Because I haven't plotted out what I want to do in my time. Why? Just why yourself down into the root? Why? 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 And you will realize it's not that because you're an idiot. It's because you haven't spent much time thinking through what you want. So you can be deliberate about how you use your time. Use your, your energy. And, and who you invest that time and energy in. But the minute you get clear on that, change your whole life. And that's what I want to leave with you tonight. If you're, if you're on the live with me now and you feel that sense of anxiety because January just done, brand new year start, people around you are kind of zoning into the opportunities, the goals and the plans and you're sitting here like, when are you going to do? That's a season too. Deciding what the next step has to be. But no matter what season you're in, no matter what season you're in, no matter where you are on the, the farmer's calendar, it is always the right time to stop and ask yourself the real questions about who you are, if you're satisfied with who you are, where you are, if you're satisfied with where you are, and what would be your best alternative. If you could pick it off of a shelf, what would you pick? And what are the characteristics and the circumstances of that new and better you, new and better environment? And why do you want that? Why is that important? Why is that valuable to you? And what? What do you need to do every single day consistently? Because to reap, you got to give it time to take root. So don't expect a quick fix. What do you need to do consistently to get that particular result? What? Spend some time with yourself each morning and allow yourself the moment, the opportunity, the rhythm of understanding your season, understanding your soil, and wisely selecting the seed. Sometimes we spend time doing one and two, understanding the season, looking at the soil, and then we pick the wrong seed and put in the soil. So you have to be patient enough with yourself to go through all of it, reflect on all of it. See where you may have chosen the wrong season to plant a particular seed where you have chosen the wrong seed to put in the particular soil, where you may have chosen the wrong soil for the particular seed or season. And don't cuss off yourself. We don't know everything one time. We can't fix everything about life one time. But if you are committed to understanding your life, listening to it, being taught through the mistakes, the errors, the failures, the drop move by your face and eat dirt, if you are committed to listening to your life, you will always learn and you'll always do a little better. So don't give up on yourself. Me not give up on you. I don't even know who you are, but I have not given up on me. So please don't give up on yourself. Once you have life, the fact that you're even on this live with the ability to hear this is just proof positive that there is more for you to do. There is better for you to have and enjoy and to feel you are worthy of being fed good energy, good gas, good vibrations, and you have the capacity to turn that energy into action. But commit to a morning routine, if even just to set aside 10 or 20 minutes to ask yourself some key questions in the morning. What are my life principles? What do I believe about who I am and what I have the authority to have? What do I believe for myself? And what about my life is dishonoring those beliefs? And I need to stop. What about my life honors those beliefs 
and I need to amplify or continue to do because I reap what I sow and I want to continue sowing this so I can reap that. Or I reap what I sow and I don't want to reap the negative consequence of this behavior. So I need to stop sowing this. We need to dig up at the seed they are out of the ground and just, you know, stop sowing this. We don't want to sow this no more. But you have to stop and ask yourself those questions. Just ask yourself those questions. And if you don't like to answer them, you're chief executive officer. You're in charge of your life. No matter what nobody wants to tell you, you really don't need permission from nobody to take your decision and take your action. Them not going to agree every time. Them not going to understand every time. But nobody feels your life the way you feel it. Them see it. Them watch it. Them like it or don't like it. But nobody feels your life the way you feel it. So you have to act like a boss and get up like a boss at the time in your life. Have to. So I'm hoping that this life has been a blessing to each person who was able to join me tonight. And if there's anything at all that you found valuable, maybe you want to watch it again, maybe you joined in the middle or closer to the end. Um, if anybody had to hop off, I'm, I'm sure there are some people who may have had to kind of hop off while we were in conversation. I'm actually going to be posting this live to my YouTube page. So you can just type in Crystal Tomlinson Good Gas Mondays and you'll see the Good Gas Mondays episode come up. And you can share the link with anybody who you think might be in a space or a season right now where they are not sure what to plant. They don't even know what, what they want to see there in their life. They're not even confident that they will survive this season to even see the fruits bearing on the tree. You can share this link with them. And it, it's a, a great transition for us for Good Gas Mondays to be moving to YouTube because it allows you to literally search for the episodes. So there are persons who, on my page, if you're not scrolling all the way back, you will never be able to find the episodes and you can't search it like that on Instagram. But YouTube will allow you to do that. So you'll always have that as the hub and the space for the video version of Good Gas Mondays. And then, of course, we have a podcast. So if you have um, Apple Podcast, um, Google Podcast, wherever you get your podcast, Stitcher, Anchor, wherever, Good Gas Mondays is also there um, for you to, to listen to. So you can go ahead and catch up on the episodes we've done so far. And what we will do is um, kind of condense the larger conversation that we've had on our Good Gas Mondays with some additional tools and guidelines um, in our podcast. So the conversations are related, but we'll just take it from a different angle each week. So if you want to, you can also subscribe to the Good Gas Mondays podcast where we share with you positive energy, um, tools that allow you to reflect and assess your life, emotional intelligent practices that allow you to feel better about who you are, recognizing that once you feel good, you make good choices. Once you feel good, you do what's good for you. Once you feel good, you attract good energy. Once you feel good, you start present yourself good. People look by you and say that it is good. And it sets a standard for how they will also treat you and engage you. So you have to look like you're happy. You have to feel like you're happy. So happiness can find you. And when, when unhappiness sees you, it knows that you need to have nothing in common. When dysfunction sees it, it knows that you need to have nothing in common. You have to come over here and not tell because there's no room and no space for it. But we have to do the internal work, the inside job. To just be whole and full, steady and ready for the seasons of life as they come. Because the storm is hit, you know. Storms are going to hit. But that's why you have to be alert and aware and flexible to be able to, even in those moments when the storm hit, to use that disorder to find your strength and to grow. So for the next four weeks, as I said, we're going to be having those conversations on the principles of the harvest. And this has been principle number one. You reap what you sow. So responsibly so you can reap a harvest that you're proud of. I hope you have a great week. Happy Monday again. May you be blessed. May you show up in your day with a spirit and a sense of abundance. May you see the opportunities. May you be courageous and confident knowing that you are worthy of the opportunities when they come and approaching them with a sense of purpose and deliberateness to say yeah. 
God met me. I'm the creator's child. This universe has a law that it operates on. And the fact that I'm still here means that part of me is still in sync and in rhythm with that energy. And I am going to make the best of these 24 hours. I'm going to make the best of my 1440 minutes. I am not going to waste a single moment doubting my worthiness. I'm not going to waste any time investing and trying to force fruit where there is clearly no opportunity for it. I must understand what season I am in. I'm going to see what soil and quality soil I have here. I'm going to look at the seed that is best suited for this quality soil in this season. And I'm going to be deliberate about planting the right seeds because I know what? I reap what I sow. And I'm going to sow on purpose. Love and blessings to you. And thank you again so much for joining me for this episode of Good Gas Mondays. And remember, if you haven't subscribed as yet to our podcast, Hop on over to the app and subscribe. We got loads of episodes there for you to catch up on. Um, and I do hope you enjoy that space as well. Bye, guys. Bless